The artist as poet is really a result of many years of research and a love that I have, a personal love and passion for, for books and of course art history and the way that the two can come together. And this exhibition I think is proof of that. So initially this research began when I was writing my master's thesis in 2013. And I was focusing on the work particularly of Andre Breton, who was the primary theorist and, and, and really the founder of the Surrealist movement. And he intended for the Surrealist movement to be a literary movement. He was a writer. And once other members started joining the group, he expanded his idea and thought, you know, there are other ways to contribute to this, you know, surrealist, um, you know, art form. And so he started making these small objects called poem objects, where he would incorporate both text and found object together. And both aspects of the artwork, the text and the object, were incredibly important to the work. They're equally important. And so that's really where the premise of the show began. Just the thought of what a poem object is and how text and object can come together and how that story can be told through contemporary art. For me, one of the most crucial aspects of this exhibition was to tell this story through the Pam Permanent Collection. So this story, I think, can be told in many ways, and it can be told with many different collections, but we were working primarily with this, you know, permanent collection from Pam, and it gave me the opportunity to see works that I hadn't seen up on display here either ever or in a very long time. And I think our viewers will really appreciate that. I think our viewers will appreciate seeing works that are maybe not so common or that they haven't seen before. And of course, the exhibition also functions for me personally as a sort of love letter to, to books and to bookmaking, to poetry, to language. These are all things that I love very much and so the research process for this exhibition was incredibly fun and it was exciting and having a chance to go behind the scenes and look at some of these very rare books in person, flip through the pages. I mean, it's been a really incredible experience. Putting the show together is a, a true labor of love, <laughs> and it's a very, very long process. So the first step is to really get to know the collection, and I've been here for long enough to where I know the collection well, but a lot of these works for me were quite a discovery. So going through the collection and creating a preliminary checklist of artworks that you think can work you know, specifically for this topic. So that was the first step. And then once we started narrowing it down, and I started working with prep and registration, coming up with 3D floor plans and figuring out really how I wanted the space to look. That's when we start cutting works. We start really narrowing it down. The space sometimes tells you what it wants. Uh, in this particular gallery, the space lent itself to two to three sections that are dealing with different topics. So the paint colors contribute to that idea. They contribute to that separation. So once you're in the space, of course, the objects tell you what they want as well. And once you're in the space, you make a whole bunch of decisions that you maybe didn't think you would have to make prior. But the process itself is, is, a, is a very long one. And I would say that the majority of the work happens, of course, behind the scenes. There are over 60 works in this exhibition. So that requires a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of writing. You know, I wrote the majority of the labels that are included in the show as well as an extended essay to give our viewers really an idea of what the premise of the show is. So it's, as I said, a very long and arduous process, but once you're in the space and you're installing and you're seeing things go up and you're seeing things in dialogue with each other, it feels so refreshing. It feels real. It feels like, you know, the culmination of all of your work coming together. And it's just, a, it's a really, really wonderful moment. The Tim Rollins was a work that I had not seen in person. And so I was incredibly excited to see it. And I had done a lot of research on it. And it's also a fairly 
new acquisition for the museum. We purchased it through the PAM Collectors Council, I believe in 2018. So this is the first time it's going up. And for me to walk into the gallery and for it to be there ready, you know, to go up on the wall was probably one of the highlights for me of installation. None of the reproductions that I've seen of the work do the work justice. You know, you just can't get the detail, the scenes, the words, the page numbers, all the things that make the work so special. So seeing it go up, like finally having it up against our very unique and, and very special concrete walls, what we're known for, I think, in this museum, it was just a really sort of like calming moment, seeing it come together that way and seeing the work finally in person and in the gallery in all of its glory. So it was just a really, really wonderful moment. Guests can expect to find something that will speak to them on a personal level. That is the main purpose, I think, in many ways of this exhibition. The works themselves are about self-reflection and you get to know the artist, of course, through the work, but you also get to know yourself. Text has this really incredible ability to function as, a, as an entry point, right? So even if you're not too well-versed in contemporary art or a contemporary art exhibition might be intimidating, text provides a little bit of, of a comfort and books provide a bit of a comfort so you can come here and I think everyone will find something that speaks to them personally. There, is, there are so many works in this show that I'm hoping people can see themselves represented on the walls here. <laughs>